Today I'll be showing you how to change the WordPress theme without losing any content, or as I like to call it, changing the WordPress theme the stress-free way. Greetings and welcome. I'm Aflan from WebAssist.xyz, where I build e-commerce websites. Today I'm going to show you how to easily change your WordPress theme without losing any content. What we'll be doing is we'll be making a copy of our live website, We'll be pulling it down to, to our PC. We'll be creating or using tools to create a, a local server environment where we can install this copy. We can make any changes we want. Once we're happy, we'll then make an export to that and we'll upload it hassle-free to our live website again. I'll have links to all the tools used in the description below. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask them. I'm happy to help. Anyway, let's get started. Let's talk about a good way to change a WordPress theme without driving yourself crazy. In other words, changing a WordPress theme the stress-free way. This is how I'd go about doing it. And what we'll do is use a local development environment. So let's say, for example, we had a website that was out there. I'm going to use uh, my WebAssist website as an example. Now, if I wanted to change the theme on my website, I wouldn't do it on the live site. For obvious reasons, there could be all kinds of errors and issues that come up. I'd have to do a lot of testing. I'd probably have to change a few things and make sure that it looks good before I push it live. Now, if I was to do that on a live server and I had visitors on the site, they would obviously see all the changes that have been made. While they've been made, they would probably have a, some sort of a disruption to, to their service. In other words, while browsing the website and so on. And now we can't have that. So what we'll do uh, to overcome this is to make a copy of the website, pull it down to our local PC, and then make all the changes we want on our local PC to the actual website, making sure not to make changes to the website, the live website, while we're doing this. And then once we've finished locally making all our changes, we'll push the website back up to the live site and overwrite the live site with the new site with all the changes. And that way, all our content, our current content, let's say our blog posts, our articles, um, pages, whatever it may be. I mean, if we had a WooCommerce store, all our products, etc., would all still be intact and there'd be no issue. Now, having said that, if we were running a WooCommerce store and we had orders while all this was happening, then there would be a few steps that we'd have to take so that we could ensure that, um, for example, all the data, all the orders, um, and those kind of things that would stay intact. I'm not going to deal with that in this video because that uh, is rather technical. It can get rather technical, let's say, um, and it's best dealt with on its own. So we'll assume for, for now that you don't have a very busy website, that you can pull it down, not make changes to it, and then make the changes on the live site, that is, make the changes on your local site, change themes the way you want it, and then push it live. To do this, we need a local development environment. So there are many local development environments that you can use. There's WAMP, XAMPP, MAMP, um, there's Desktop Server. I've used all of them. Um, there's two that I like. Um, the one I'm having issues with, especially on a Windows machine. I'll show you what it is, and by all means, try it out. It is a little bit more simple to use than my preferred choice, um, especially when you're pulling sites down. It has got a few more features, um, but try it out. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm not using it is simply because it's too slow. Um, I have issues on certain Windows machines. You can use it on a Mac and Windows. On certain Windows machines, people have been complaining that there are speed issues. Uh, with the actual with the software so that's why i'm avoiding it at this stage i do test it out from time to time and if it ever comes to a stage where it was more stable i may consider using it okay so let's get started the choice that i'm speaking about is local by flywheel it's a free download and both of these um, options that i'm going to show you are free it's a free download you can download it you can install it i'm not going to use flywheel as i said for this demonstration i'm going to be using my choice which is Laragon. By the way, there is the address for local. It's local.getflywheel.com. I'll leave that in the a copy of that URL in the description below. My choice would be Laragon. I discovered Laragon a couple of, well, maybe possibly a year ago now. Laragon um, was revolutionary. Uh, is extremely fast. I can't uh, recommend it highly enough. It's got a few less features, as I said, than what local's got. Having said that, the speed that it works at is phenomenal. So if speed is important to you, Laragon is your first choice. Anyway, uh, long story short, um, you can go to Laragon and you can download Laragon right away. What you do is just click on the download button there. Once you've downloaded Laragon, you can install Laragon. 
I'm going to assume that you've done that and then let us get started. So what we'll do in my case is I'll start Laragon and when it's Laragon has started it's very quick and once you've set Laragon up or let me let me go through the setup of, of what you might want to do with Laragon. So once you've installed it you can decide if you want Laragon to run when Windows starts. This is under preferences as you can see there. You can decide if you want to run Laragon when Windows starts, if you want to run it minimized, start it automatically and then your document route. This is where you'll decide where you want your website and, and all your data, your website databases to be installed on your local PC. So let's say for example um, in C drive under the Laragon folder in www. That's where my, my actual websites are installed and in the data directory this will have uh, be the actual databases. In my case is Laragon data MySQL MySQL. Now to clarify um, you can leave all these settings uh, on the default. You should be fine wherever you want to set it up. So I'm just showing you what, what my system, um, my setup rather looks like. And the host name, that would be the, the website name. Now in this case, I've chosen LARA as my domain uh, extension. So for example, you could have .dev, which I don't recommend now because Google's taken that over and you'll get errors. Or you can have .o or .setup or .whatever you want. I'm using .lara in honor <laughs> of Laragon. So you can use .o, um, I recommend .o, possibly .test. Or something else that um, you would like to use that's descriptive and just be very careful don't use a .com or something like that or your website won't resolve on your PC now remember this is uh, installing a service so to speak on your local machine to be safe use .oo then services and ports uh, I'm using a patch in MySQL I'm leaving everything as is um, I'm auto installing or allowing SSL as well I'm not bothered by that or the mail catcher, so I'm not even going to discuss that any further. Now, you can use uh, Nginx if you want uh, with Memcache and Redis. I've found that most of my clients are on Apache, so I'm sticking with Apache, and, and that's what's installed by default, so I'll leave it as is. And that's the settings, very simple. Now, once you've started with Laragon and you've opened it, you just click Start All, and that's where the magic happens. Look how quick it loaded. Now, if you go and load local by Flywheel, you'll notice a huge, huge difference in just starting local as opposed to starting Laragon. Laragon started in a few seconds. Anyway, where should we start? I don't think you really need to worry about anything else. Like I said, this is a very high level overview. If you are having issues, please go to the community section in Laragon. The, the help there is super fast and very helpful. Leo. The, the person who developed Laragon normally answers probably within a few minutes or a few hours at the most. And there's a lot of other people that will help you with any issues you may have. Laragon is very simple to use, so you shouldn't have too many issues at all, if any. Now, I'm not going to go through any of the features of Laragon. Like I said, this is a high level overview, more for beginners, just to help you to change the theme. So let's get back on track here. Now, what we want to do is create a website. Now, with, with Laragon running now, we can now create a local website that we are going to use to import our live website to. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to right click anywhere here and say quick create. I'm going to create a WordPress website and let's call it web, web assist change theme. And that's as simple as that. Now it's downloading WordPress, extracting it, creating my WordPress website. And it's done. I can now visit my website. It's as simple as that. Now locally on my machine, I've now got a WordPress website set up. Now I'm going to install my website. This is simple. At this stage, I'm going to go English United States. I'm going to click continue. And then it's asking me now for the data. This is now part of the WordPress install, by the way. This is the database name, database username, database password, database host, table prefix. Let's go quickly and we'll see. Now, our database name would be our URL. It creates the same database to make things simple. So it would be Web Assist Change Theme. That's the database name. Um, username on, on Laragon is always root and there's no password. Remember, this is locally. So you can just use those settings. The only thing that will be necessary is the database name. So we'll click Submit and we'll get started. Now we run the install and WordPress is installed. Now we can log into or create the, the site title. I'm going to say web assist. You can put anything here for now. We are going to overwrite this site with our online site or our live site. So 
but um, you know, let's try to be a little consistent here. So I'm going to say app line. I'm just going to give it a password of. Uh, I'll use that password. That's a bit of a stinker, but anyway. And then I'm going to go app line. Now my WordPress is installed and ready to go. I'm going to log in. And let's do this. Okay, I'm now in my website. Now remember, this is locally. If you have a look there, this is a local website on my machine. I'm in the WordPress backend. There was the mail notification I, I spoke about earlier. Now what I'm going to do, very simply, is I'm going to install a plugin. I'm going to go to plugins in the dashboard, add new. The plugin that I'm going to, well, let's have a look at the website on the front end just so that we are super clear on what's happening here. Uh, apologies, wrong one. There we go. Let's look at the website on the front end. There we go. That is a blank WordPress website. Okay, now I'm going to install a plugin that's going to help me to import my website from my live server. I'm going to install the same plugin on my live server. I'm going to pull down my website and then I'm going to show you exactly how we'll do this. Now, without getting too technical, this is a, a quick way of importing a website and scrubbing the database, making sure that everything works. With this tool, we don't have to worry about anything. It does everything for us. We literally just download a copy of our website and then we import it into the local version. So the plugin that I'm going to use, there are many you can use. The one that I find works very well for this particular use is all-in-one WP migration. There we go. Now, I wouldn't use all-in-one WP migration to do backups of my website. In fact, I definitely wouldn't. I'd use something like Updraft Plus. I can recommend that. Anyway, there it is. All-in-one WP migration. I'll click install now. I'll activate it. And now we're ready to import our website. Now, let's go to our live website. Let's log in and get a copy of our live website. In the back end of our live website, once we logged in, We'll go to plugins. Now remember what we're doing here is we're installing the same plugin, all in one WP migration, to make a copy of this website. So we'll go to plugins and add new. And here we are. Now, same thing, we'll search for all in one WP. There is our um, well, there is the plugin rather, and click install now. And now I'm going to activate it. Now we'll go to all in one WP migration. And we'll say export. We'll say export to, we'll export it to a file. If you add the pro version, now this is the free version I'm using, unless your, your website is above 500 megabytes in size, you don't need the pro version. In other words, you can use the free version, it works perfectly well. If it was the pro version, you have all these options where you could export it to and also import it from all these different options. Anyway, for now we'll go file, now it prepares my export. If you've got a larger site, this could take a while. This particular site is not too big. As you can see, it's ready now. 267 megabytes. I'll click it to download and it'll download to my local machine. I'm going to close this for now. Once I finish downloading it, the backup of my site, I'll go to my new site. That's my local site. And I'm now going to import that backup. I'll go to my dashboard to all in one WP migration and import. And remember, this is what my site looks like. It's a bare WordPress install. I exported my live site from a file, and I'm going to import it from a file. So I'll click on Import From and File. Now I'll click Proceed. There's an important part. I need, and now I need to get my permalink sorted out. So to do that, I'll click on Permalink Settings. Now I'll have to log into my site. Now to complete the process, I'll click Save Changes twice. And my permalinks have been saved. And that's it. Now let's have a look at the website on the front end. That was my fresh install. It had nothing there. I'll now refresh. And there is my complete website on my local machine ready. Now I can go ahead, change our themes, make sure my website is looking good the way that I want it. 
You can go to appearance and themes, and you can swap out your themes, make any changes you want, tweak them, fix it up. And once you've finished and you're happy with the way your new theme looks, we'll do exactly the same thing in reverse. We'll now export a copy of our website from our local machine and we'll import it into our live website. The website in total may be down for five minutes and then it'll be back up again. Now I'm going to show you this whole process. I'm not going to do it on the live site, obviously, on my live site. I'm going to show you the exact process to follow. I'll do it on our local site. So you can just follow these steps on your um, live site. So what I'll do is I'll go in my dashboard to all-in-one WP migration and then I'll export a copy here and I'll say export to file. I'll now download it. I'll close this. Once it's downloaded I'll go to my live site. Now as I said I'm going to show you the steps to follow on my local site. I don't want to obviously do this on my live site. You can follow these exact steps on your live site. On your dashboard, you'll say import and then import from file. That is my export, my latest export, and it begins. And once again, I'll hit proceed. Once imported, I'm once again going to Create my permalinks. I'll click on permalink settings. Now you may have to log in again. I was on my local machine, so I won't have to. I'll just click save changes twice. And again. And done. And that's how you change WordPress themes without losing any content. Or as I like to call it, changing a WordPress theme the stress-free way. <laughs> anyway, if that was helpful to you, Please do subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing WordPress videos and e-commerce videos on a weekly basis. Also do hit that notification bell. And also if you've got any comments or questions, please leave them in the description below. I'd love to hear them. Hear them. And also uh, do remember I'll have links to all the tools used in the description below. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Have a good day and bye for now.